What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. Double Game Week 34 is over. It's time to have a look at my Game Week 35 team selection. What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. FPR Harry here and today, Game Week 35 team selection time. We're going to have a look at my potential transfers, potential captaincy, any potential rotation that I'm expecting going into Game Week 35. We're also going to have a review of how I've got on in Game Week 34 now that it's over. Before we do that, I'm going to try and hit 1000 likes on the video and please make sure you have subscribed if you have not already. Game week 34 was an okay one. I got 115 points, which gave me a green arrow, moving my overall points from up to 2,424, moving me up to 214th in the world. In terms of my players, where else to start than Edison, who of course got benched for the second game. I did say on my stream, no goalkeeper transfer was worth a minus four, which was right, unless you're buying Jason Steele, but most of us had triple Brighton. But if you did buy Steele, congratulations on another big return from him. He looks like the value player of the season almost alongside Andreas Pereira who looks like he's now out for the season. In defence it was okay I played a back four we had returns from three of them of course Trippier versus Solanke was the one decision I had to make this week. Solanke scoring more points than I realised he would ever do when I brought him into my team but unfortunately on my bench this week Trippier started 16 from a Stupinan happy with him the other Brighton mids less so so Matoma four March two again let's hope for some points they do have Everton at home going into game week 35. Salah, 18, happy with him. Should have captained him, but it was never really going to go anywhere but Erling Haaland. We have a Rashford, 8. We finally got some points from Bruno Fernandes and then Erling Haaland up front. Let me know how you got on. Did you get a green arrow, red arrow, your overall point score? Happy enough with it. It could have been more if it wasn't for that late, late McAllister penalty, wiping out my Luke Shaw clean sheet. And of course, McAllister has a reasonable amount of ownership as well. So game week 35 looks like a more boring potentially game week that we have between now and the end of the season. It's probably the only normal game week we have left. Game week 36 is going to be a double, game week 37 will be a double and game week 38, although it's a single game week, it's the final day of the season, it's all matches at the same time, it's never a normal game week. So there is going to be a lot of people going to be wanting to roll their transfer going into game week 35, but there are potential moves that I could do, particularly dependent on some early Manchester City team news. Now Manchester City is the early kickoff going into the Saturday games because there is no early kickoff, so it is the 3pm games of which Manchester City is one of them. We sometimes get a little bit of Manchester City team news and that might bear a lot of resemblance about what we do with our teams, particularly around the likes of Kevin De Bruyne, the likes of Erling Haaland and the likes of Julian Alvarez as well, even the likes of Jack Grealish and Mirad Mahrez in there as well. So I will be waiting for that. If we get news that the likes of Haaland starts, De Bruyne starts and the team is maybe as we expect, then I'll likely roll my free transfer. However, they play Champions League football on Tuesday, so some of us are expecting a bit of Manchester City rotation. Given they play Leeds at home, which in theory is a fixture that they should be able to beat with a little bit of rotation in their starting 11. So if there is a bit of rotation, potentially Alvarez starts. However, Kevin De Bruyne is now back in full Manchester City training and Pep might want to give him a few minutes before the Champions League. However, if we hear that Alvarez starts, I really like the idea of Alvarez at home to Leeds and I could buy him in for Ollie Watkins going into game week 35. Manchester City then have a double in game week 37. So I could keep Alvarez and just hope he gets a start in game week 37 in one of the two fixtures and add an extra double game week fixture to my squad. That transfer will allow me or free up enough money next week for me to do Dominic Solanke up to either Alexander Isaac or Callum Wilson. Again, I'm adding a double game week player to my squad for game week 36, Alvarez in my double for game week 37 as well. If there is no news again, I'll probably end up rolling my transfer or I won't be bringing in Alvarez unless I know for sure that he's gonna start. The big question we have here, of course, is Isaac versus Wilson. Right now, I think think I'm probably just favoring with Wilson, even though Isaac is the one in the graphic. Isaac is great and he's probably more likely to start both. However, when Wilson starts, the amount of goals and points he's scoring is so good. And when he plays centrally, Isaac is more the creator for Wilson. Wilson is likely to be on penalties as well. So I think I'm likely to take the gamble on Callum Wilson and be him as my Newcastle forward going into game week 35. However, not completely decided. And thankfully, I get to watch them against Arsenal this weekend before I make the final decision. So looking at my team for game week 35, the first dilemma we have is in goal. We have Edison versus Kepa. Kepa away to Bournemouth, Edison at home to Leeds. Now Edison of course has a high clean sheet chance in this one. There's a very, very small chance he doesn't start, but that's okay. Auto subs can take care of that. 
but they do concede the odd goal. He doesn't really make any saves and he doesn't really get any bonus, which at least Kepa does. Kepa scored three against Arsenal despite conceding three goals because of the saves that he did make. At the moment, it is Edison that is in goal for me. I am benching Kepa. Don't particularly want any Chelsea players in my lineup given how I've had to watch us suffer and watch us perform over the past few months. Edison is the one I'm going with just for the upside of a clean sheet, which I don't think Kepa is going to get. Bournemouth are a top side and doing very well. I know full well with Dominic Solanke, who does find himself on my bench again this week. In defence, we have a stupid and we have Trent Alexander-Arnold, and I am favouring Trippier over Luke Shaw at the moment. Manchester United defensively do look good, but West Ham at home are a side that I do expect to score, so I am going with Trippier with the home fixture. I do expect no clean sheets for either of them. This could change pre-deadline, but I'm just going because the attacking threat of Trippier is better because Luke Shaw is playing at centre-back at the moment. Into midfield, we do start double Manchester United, so Fernandes and Rashford keep their place. Mo Salah in there with a the vice-captaincy at the moment. Solly March and then Matoma in there, hoping some points for them finally against Everton because it's been a fair few number of weeks since we've got anything realistic out of them. And then up front, at the moment, I'm planning on rolling my transfer, so Ollie Watkins is in there alongside Erling Haaland, captain. However, if we hear, for example, that Erling Haaland does not start in this game, I will move the captaincy armband off Erling Haaland onto Mo Salah, probably. It could end up on Julian Alvarez, though, who's likely to come in for Ollie Watkins, because if Haaland's bench, it surely means that Alvarez is going to start in this one. Again, I've only got one transfer, so I don't really want to go tearing my team apart. I think rolling my transfer is probably best. I think no hits between now and the end of the season is probably where I'm at. It'll probably help me just to secure the rank that I do and want to achieve this season. So roll unless we hear on Manchester City that Haaland is benched or Alvarez does start. That's my plan for game week 35. Let me know what you think. Is Alvarez too risky a punt? Would you just do it anyway, chase a few points? Or is actually Watkins to Isaac just a sensible move given how good Newcastle are and actually the fact that we might see Arsenal without either of their first choice centre-backs in Gabriel and Saliba this weekend. Let me know your questions you have about your team as well. Drop it all in the comment section down below. Of course, it's a slightly later deadline. There will be a deadline stream for two hours before though to get all of your questions answered live. As a reminder, please make sure you've liked before you go. Try and hit 1,000. Subscribe as well. And I'll be back again very soon.